with a high mortality rate you know the mortality rate the first wave the second wave what's going on in our surroundings so therefore the knowledge of the viral structure factors that help in progression spread pathological findings diagnostic methods and treatment modalities helps in understanding the viral disease and also in treating the patients in a better way so this preventing the community spread of the deadly infection is very important so this webinar highlights the global epidemiological status characteristics of the virus symptomatology of the patient what are the challenges of treatment of the patient what are the pharmacotherapeutic challenges of treatment of covid 19 the news of the animals in the research and latest line of treatment for the covid 19 so fortunately we got very renowned scientists icmr scientists with us dr dinesh kumar sir and dr udhav choudhary sir so now i invite uh, ms mrs pushpalata madam to introduce our first speaker kumar welcome you all again uh, am i audible sir good morning yes. am i audible yes. yes yes good morning one and all on behalf of oriental college of pharmacy myself mrs pushpalata saukule assistant professor department of pharmacology welcome you all for the national webinar on insight challenges of covid-19 research treatment and vaccine development i feel highly privileged to get the opportunity to introduce our first speaker of the day dr b dinesh kumar sir dr b dinesh kumar sir served the prestigious premier nutrition research institute of india icmr nim national institute of nutrition and retired as director grade scientist after 38 years he is recognized nationally and globally for his contribution to the field of preclinical toxicology nutrition pollution interaction and social drug epidemiology sir has 75 publications in national and international journal of repute sir is also recipient of several fellowship like normal borgiu fellowship usda national academy of medical science andhra pradesh academy of science telangana academy of science and indian pharmacological society the task force projects on heavy metals phthalate in ions ion filling in tea screening of recombinants innovative therapies and scientific validations of traditional medicinal products are some more of his important contributions sir is also expert member in the various organization like cdsco food safety and standard authority of india dcgi ayush dbt dst ministry of environment and forest and ministry of health and family welfare sir has also past participated in oecd meeting on biosafety and novel food food safety paris france and nominated by ministry of environment forest and climate change india Nom sir is also nominated uh, as a counselor international union of basic clinical pharmacology and pharmacology of natural products section in 2018 to 2022 with this short introduction i now invite and request dr b dinesh kumar sir to start with the session over to you sir thank you very much am i audible to all of you yes sir yes sir yes sir ah okay sir uh, in fact it's a great privilege and pleasure to be one of the invited lectures in the national webinar first of all i may like to compliment the team and his management and you all for organizing such a programs on webinar though we are physically not able to really communicate the things but this actually becomes a part of our intervention strategies for icmr for the social scientists and it fits to the prime minister's propagation through social media how the awareness should come we are definitely privileged why because uh, we have a very good educated team we are highly technologically advanced countries uh, competing with them we are supplying the vaccines we are supplying the drugs and really speaking it's a marvelous work which we have done 
I may just like to go to my first presentation if you allow me. Yes, sir. Please. I am sharing the slides. Are you able to see? Are you able to see the screen? Not yet, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I I am just going. We just it is a title slide. Now in the next slide, I may like to you and ah right. Oh, it is not sure. One second, please. So I yeah. right. Let us go by the lecture first. You all are pharmacists working in a pharmacy field. The field has re-emerged, and the re-emergence is the reasons you know very well. Today, India has become a proud country to be the highly vaccinated population or citizen. But more than that, we are able to produce. At least not one till date. Today we have four vaccines on the shelf, whichever you like. And one of the vaccine from Bharat Biotech is totally been indigenous, which has actually demonstrated the India's contribution. And you all pharmacists have worked day and night. The problem is that the pharmacist is. so he is getting a least priority but i may like to compliment you you are the direct communicators to the patient more than a physician so i compliment all the pharmacists and with this few words i may like to tell and go ahead with my lecture why it is not going i'm not able to why the slides are not going okay now let us just first understand why this covid uh which type of there are totally i am just giving you the clue that there are totally 6 to 7 type of corona viruses now you are listening to the new varieties delta the delta may feel bit of 1.4.3 like this they are going on adding the viruses because of the mima slide in the last there is a red box in this red box this is a 2000 2019 covid novel corona virus for which we are actually going for a treatment what is this corona virus first understand human corona vaccine was the first identified in the mid 1960s please don't have a impression that it is a current vaccine but it is a virus found in my 1960s the virus such as sars do not contain dna the m pharmacy students or anybody who are writing a competitive exam of any nature it is the only rna organism main sub groups of this corona virus which are known as alpha beta gamma and delta now you are coming across that the current vaccine whether it works on a delta or not that is the real, real issue which is posing a challenge to us there yeah, some says no in fact we have to note the position discovery of the delta vaccine is been done from hyderabad ccm and we are the position in a position of this delta virus with us now i am just giving you the seven list and i am going we have can add some more vaccine some more viruses on this but you see there are four different Li uh, currently known strains of viruses which infect human. I have given on the left hand side. Now come to the right hand side. Now this virus has become a real painful virus, which is having a Getty illustration. And in Italian, this thing it is uh, um, uh, mentioned as crowns on that. So this is the language we have to understand the Greek language. that they had a crown so it is a corona has come because of this name why is it not going uh, 
Now let us just see the structure of this virus. Uh, in the why the structure is important nowadays now recombinant vaccines recombinant product all these products are coming you are able to see there is a spike glycoprotein e protein then membrane protein then mrna and the envelope you can just see this is a very tough envelope Sorry for this interruption because I am not able to continue the slide with my operations. Now, the ICMR NIV Puna is possessing this specific virus, which you can see on the left hand side is a standard described, and this is the organism which we are available and which is there. And the same virus has been used for all the challenging studies. When Mathin was mentioning about the animals, now the best animal is hamster, mice, and rats which we have supplied to the NIV Puna. I am fortunate I was associated in some or other form to supply this hamster because in the hamster you can just see the presence of a virus which can replicate and it shows the good results and these challenging studies have been standardized by the NIV Puna. And today whatever the Bharat Biotech vaccine has come, it has been totally tested on our hamster my where the NIV Puna's contribution is extraordinary to come out with the in vitro, in vivo, and even in a monkey studies and the challenging. That is why the Bharat Biotech vaccine is a totally indigenous collaborative project of ICMR and Bharat Biotech. So we feel proud. And these publications you can see in the our Lancet paper, where you can just see the contributions of the ICMR. Now, I'm just coming to you the whole issue is from where did this virus has arrived. Now, but you have to see, this is the official Chinese timeline on the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, as a pharmacist, sir, what is, what, how I, it is important and how it is going to help us. This virus in a hospital case, where in November 2019, even if I go in further slide, you can come to know that in US also the cases reported before the November 2019. On December, origin of pneumonia. This is a Wuhan, the Wuhan uh, report, and this Wuhan report you can. Coming to the January 7, 2020, the jumpy discussion of this virus from uh, animals to human and this discussion, their Politburo meeting. Same way you come on January 11, Beijing report the first man, January 11, December 31st. These are the very crucial days for you. Because in the midnight of December 31st, the Chinese have announced that there is unknown origin disease which is coming up. The understanding we must know what is the rational pinpointed towards the China. And the same thing go with the giant. They have reported a first case January 14th. The WHO has cleared it. January 20th, the complete structure of the team has been put. And this is how it went on till the March, and everything was actually. Now, the question comes, why COVID-19 therapeutics is a challenge? We have to really see, because my topic presentation is also pharmacological presentation, why this COVID-19 therapeutic is the beginning challenge. You see, this pandemic has really caused the destruction of India's economy, health, not India, but the global economy. Please remember. Globalization has weakened our ability to deal with this crisis, how it can happen. You have seen lockdowns. Bombay, where you are staying, is the maximum lockdown. Now also I understand Saturday, Sundays are lockdowns because the Delta reporting has gone up. 
second case when the lockdown will open when you can go for your work when you will earn the bread what is the in a government economy government thinking so this is the covid aaya hai फार्मेसी का क्या रोल है हम घर में बैठे घर में नहीं बैठ सकते आपका रोल फ्रॉम द इकोनॉमी से स्टार्ट होता है नाउ कमिंग टू द माइग्रेंट लेबर हाउ द माइग्रेंट लेबर स्टार्टेड गोइंग आउट ऑफ दी दिस हैज गिवन अ लॉट ऑफ लेसन the lesson she will be asking the lesson for example the migrant labor why they migrated because they did not get a proper ration they did not expecting from the landlord and because there was no ration card for them so they have moved out now you might have seen five days back the country should have only one ration card system one card and because of this only the migration would have really stopped if you have a food to eat Why you will migrate? You will not migrate. So we think that this participation is very very important for all of you. Now, all the shutters are down. The scenes you might have been witnessing. Thirty years. That means we have worked so hard in the globalization to bring the economy and security. Covid has shown you what you are. This is a challenge. Now you have to. Keep Think that COVID has come and gone. No, it has not gone. It has not come. Abe. But our preparedness has become a hollow in front of such a pandemic. So we are not able to decide what to do. Everybody has its own way of talking. Why COVID? Lockdown? Why? Why not? Why? Why not? 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 let us just understand the five and the five epidemics which have changed the whole world but there are 20 top epidemics like i may just list you first one then the cold epidemic and in that epidemic you can just see the skeleton the human skeleton in bongo one village is there in the china where all the human being were actually Going to be a museum. Why does it come back? What is the reason? Nobody knows. It continued. It continued in such a way that the people have actually gone. Like now, the war. The war. The some people have won the war. When they migrated from one place to another place, they carried the virus of the geological changes, and this epidemic already has changed. I am just bringing you only five, like plague of Justinian, which has no. one left to die that means nobody survived under to fight that to avoid the sick people they said you be inside ye ye apna iske bare mein de raha hai abhi padho baith ke suno ye abhi is ye hai na red billion lives in just 4 years how not there so don't yeah, yeah. that the epidemic came to such type of pandemic has happened there were poor recording now the media is there we are able to record everything then the great plague of london this is a very interesting it has killed more than 1 lakh population in london uh, excuse me sir in sorry to interrupt 65 and after the after this play sir somebody somebody please sir, sorry let them uh, all the participants are requested please uh, mute mute their mics please uh, mute their mics because some noise is uh, yeah. so shall i uh, i think i have to mute all sir you can unmute yourself i have muted to all you can unmute yourself yes sir yeah are you able to hear yes yes sir yes sir please yeah the great plague of london 1 lakh population has died how they have died
was unkind with them so but again they have emerged now india also do the same thing we has to re emerge yes these things are expected we just not gone onto the line small pox the, the small pox which is a european disease which has come and which because we have developed the vaccine and that is how the world vax small pox discovery has come then coming to the cholera it is a great victory now you cannot you can just say that our treatment has become easy otherwise people the villages used to be wiped out so we have faced this is one more epidemic but this pandemic we have to really think how we can just to do so please what you mind said that this is the biggest yes there is no doubt this is the biggest pandemic which should not have happened why it has happened let us go into the deep and how we can control about it now pandemics has actually closed down first let us just understand why these pandemics are happening there are going to be future challenges for youngsters like you yeah as your human civilization is flourishing did infections and diseases community to each other we started staying with animals sometimes there is a poor sanitation poor nutrition we could not actually do there was a fertile ground which we have provided please understand why i am telling you when i am going to take you to the last stage where i am going to say that treatment means it is not a health of human being it is a health of animal health of environment look please make it pharmacists are going to come out with a new area of research after this that new area is a eco farm this pharmacology has a lot of research work to undergo while some of the earliest pandemic found wiping out the population but medical and health initiatives were able to halt the spread of the disease so let us just understand this okay now let us go with the second this thing first of all everybody has their own data this this is a source document from one of the who publications and you can how we should go about it how where we should go like many a times the moment you are confirmed with a covid first in your mindset you think that you should go to the hospital why we should go to the hospital is there is a condition which i have mentioned non severe severe or a critical without knowing or classifying this thing you just run to the hospital and in the hospital you carry the real serious virus with you and that is how the whole thing has started spreading you have to understand now you are living the black fungus yellow fungus all these fungal diseases are somebody says it is a carcinogenic right effect somebody says it is the mask which is not washed and worn now you must understand today or tomorrow you will become one nbl auditor today or tomorrow you will become the assessor and in this assessing you are supposed to go and check the hospital ventilations in the ventilation where the filters are there whether the filters are choked or not choked how many times you heard this word because this lessons of covid are very very important for everyone you can just think of new opening of the research new opening of your business opportunities new opening of employment to counter this type of non severe that is the absence of severe then severe is that means your uh, oxygen saturated oxygen levels are actually below 90% you are considered as a severe and critical means where you require a life support and at that time only you are supposed to go here also in the severe we have to go to the hospital when you are 90 percent scot comes down exactly the recommended guideline which you must understand that how you are going to support it just a brief how actually this onset and everything takes place the the 
let us just consider a zero day and from the zero to seventh day the timeline of onset of the corona that means you have met a person or you have contacted a person without wearing a mask or without this thing you went as a courtesy call to him and all those things हे म्हणजे म्यूट का म्हणजे मी बोललेले ऐकायला नाही ना जाणार हॅलो या डॉक्टर गीता वन गिजी यस या शेल आई गो अहेड सर यस सर यस सर या सो ऑन टिल 7 डेज यू विल लर्न फ्रॉम दैट इज व्हाई व्हेन वी से इफ यू हैव विजिटेड एनी पर्सन हु इज सफर्ड विद कोविड अदर स्टेट and he wants to join the join the duty we say that you get the pcr done if pcr is negative you will <laughs> but now apart from pcr if you have visited other state till 8 days after the pcr test you banda kasa zala seventh day till 12th day 13th day is a very very crucial time and this crucial period has to be very strictly mentioned where you can just land up with the respiratory arrest and other matters which are very serious concern so i have given you a picture up to 30 days and from 8th day to the 14th day it is a real serious this thing where we have indicated on the above how the 27% 39% of the population comes so the pharmacist also should should ask the person when you are dispensing a drug what is the state why is taking like in the middle the government has to interfere intervene and mention that the moment you get a mild fever or another thing you start with a standard treatment guideline like ivermectin steroid cicilline or erythromycin why because our job was at that time to arrest the disease to arrest the disease we have put that guideline now coming to the next phase which i am going to teach you this picture has appeared in a science in the science you can see see act that means you are able to see a numbers 1 2 actually yes, act and where all this thing lung is the first where it goes implant will go on circulating and every organ it tears so my next slide that the covid back covid virus tears the way from the vein from the that is the problem with the covid virus we are the the treatment still is a confusion is still is a confusion at the end slide also i will be showing you the confusing slide only because we are not able to detect today new new additions are coming into this and physician also work and how the trial and error work then we have we have to give 1 mg 5 mg here we are changing the name of a drug or we are putting the reposition of the drug and we are making like that so this is how the whole thing is actually working with this so please understand the covid tears from vein to brain and it has that specific property i am just going to tell you only the first the non pharmacological treatment this actually made a political thinking that the people have people have been asked to have the plate ringing and all these things the the everybody has the democracy in the democracy this specific incident has become a big lesson this thing that means an idea how we have created a awareness and prime minister is very happy we are happy because every citizen has participated in 
intervention strategy. They participated, they understood, and because of such participation, pressure, we are in a real, real containment area. That means we have controlled the COVID vaccine. Imagine 135 million population, and we are still not actually gone. So let us just be very courageously thinking. And this is one of the public health lessons. That means in epidemiology, it will go as a very big public health lesson. Now, coming to the second non-pharmacological treatment is that by actually request, recommending the people who are working as a frontline warrior. What they have done, they have selected a frontline warrior. They wanted to honor them from a, from a scavenger. Please remember, I have put a photo of a scavenger to the doctor and to the nurse. So how to do this? So they have thought out one procedure that is an intervention procedure to keep you away and to keep you in awareness that this virus is playing a danger. Please be careful. Let us respect all those things, Please. which the government has really done a very good thing. But the people participation was more because in the country like this, who will listen to whom? We never thought that this type of discipline will be there. Now, we have made some lockdowns. What are these lockdowns? That means this area is locked because the infection rate was high and nobody can move from one place to other place. And these lockdowns were managed by the police. So what is, whenever we want, the so what, how to, the only way is why we are requesting triple layer masking, social distancing, and isolating from the disorder and with a government direction as and when is there, these are some of the non-pharmacological therapeutics. Now coming to some of the calculations, that is always people say well, how you can just see. This specific chart, even today, this specific chart is very, very important where you can avoid the infection rate. You can just see right side and left side that how the infection rate goes. If you are in, if you are standing with a person who's suffering with COVID and he is with a mask and you are not with a mask, that means there is every chance that 70% you will also get COVID. He is wearing a mask, you are wearing a mask. If you are three times more speaking to him with no social distancing, he is 100 COVID infection. Now, you have to go with that every day update. Now, current update is that you have to have a two meters to three meters minimum distance between a one person speaking to other. Why? It is called as a droplet infection. The droplet infection means when you are speaking, your drop is going with a speed and that speed has a limitation and it cannot cross more than one meter. It drops down. So maintain the social distancing. So like this, you have to, now you can just see how you can calculate your risk with the occupational, with this thing, and this calculation will tell you exactly where we are standing. And based on this only, the government laws have been fixed and the big survey work has been done. And this is how we are going to work it on. Then the, this is what exactly emerged out. That means you please wear a mask, social distancing, then wash your hands. The third one is that we always nutrition how it comes, we have the classified where the immunoglobulins are reached, where and all those things were there. So such type of plate meals is essential at that time. And all this is important until unless you maintain the Swast Bharat. To maintain a Swast Bharat, you should have a Swatch Bharat. So Swatch Bharat was the slogan given. At that time, nobody realized the COVID. Now everything is becoming Swachatha Pe. So we are actually learned the lesson. COVID has made us change. We are now standing in a queue. Well, these are all good lessons which we have in the COVID. And this is an opportunity. And this is how the government, ICMR and NIN has done that micronutrients plays a very important synergistic role. Now also you are seeing that how vitamin A, iron, zinc, and all these things will play a role to improve your micronutrient efficiency, D, B, 12, and E. All whether I should bring it in a pharmacology or whether I should bring in a diet, 
or whether I should bring in a nutrition. Now it has to be decided. Now all these things which we are now proving is a RDA. Within the RDA, if you consume, there is every chance that you will get a very good immunity. If you are planning to slip from not having, then we have to go more than two RDA. Once you cross this two RDA, that means two more than two recommended dietary allowances, that means it forms under the category of drug. So you have learned two, three lessons, regulatory science, and how the drugs B complexes will become a drug and how the B complex can become a recommended dietary intake substances. So please understand these are the things which we have to really know. Otherwise, in the classrooms, the teacher will be telling that RDA, yes, sir, so kya karenge? RDA leke kya karenge? These are all the things which are actually going to make you a very good regulator, very good scientist and very good understanding. These are the questions which they will be repeatedly asked in your competitive exams. Now, I am just taking you to the ICMR contribution. Now, we are going the fourth round of zero virulence test and all the three surveys have been done. Two or three surveys, I was the direct involvement. My publications are there in the Lancet on this specific type of studies. And these studies are actually been quoted and now fourth survey to find out the children what is the rain, it is completed just recently, I understand. Now, the good important, how to control the this thing. If our chance is that only vaccination is the only alternative. And now that India has approved four vaccines. One vaccine is day before yesterday. Sipla is actually, is propagating this vaccine. And now the three vaccines are already there, Covaxin, Covishield, Sputnik vaccine. Now tomorrow onwards, the Cipla vaccine has started available, but this vaccination has been totally under the control of government, except for 15% of the vaccines, which have been sold on a commercial, but every person will be recorded. Till yesterday, we came to know that our 20 crore, uh, 30 crore population has received the vaccines. So we are moving very fast. Let us hope for the best. And I think the vaccination will certainly make us to come to some stage. We are expecting that by November or December end, we can complete the 60 to 70% vaccination. And to promote this, the pharmacist has a very, very big role. We appeal pharmacist, please participate in the citizens promotion policy of vaccination. Let no one be there. For poor people, vaccinations are available at health centers. And there is nothing, the political statements will be made that vaccines are not available, this is that. Vaccines are plenty available in a lineup of vaccines, but the vaccines are in a strategic manner and they will be made available. Next point is that this is the vaccine watch. And this is how the India has performed. And you can just see four vaccine stuff have already start emerged into the market. And this is the exact vaccine watch. Which and we are going as per the line. Now, I am one of the few persons who took the vaccines in February, which has for COVID shield first vaccine, which has been introduced. So we are thankful to the PM that they have given us the vaccine. Please take the photograph, submit, show it to the citizens, to other people, that vaccination will not harm. So this is what I want to tell you. Now that vaccination has to be continued. Now let us just come, but before I come, I may like to show you this picture. This is a very, very complicated picture. You confused what is this picture i myself got confused this is a who guideline book where you can just see a big blue is a placebo that means without treatment there is a treatment the moment that the length of the line that means i am showing you with the arrow the length of the line is the length of the structure if you come to azithromycin, which has been used in the starting, and then you have shifted to chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, then fever was not getting controlled. You went on to the steroids. From steroids, you come to the lopinavir, which is an antiviral drug. 
then you came to the ramsdivir so many ramsdivir uh, black marketing has happened and the people have started producing the this thing uh, duplicate batches of the ramsdivir and this is how the highest use has come to ramsdivir then there will be a recombinant product and this recombinant product also has been given in a cocktail to kill all the viruses then all these small things like a the uh, vitamin c ivermectin the ivermectin is be a question mark now coming in and other these things these are all supplementary therapy they absolutely perfect done clinical trial so just giving you a glimpse now this glimpse how why it has become so seriously involved how it functions let us understand the host entry it will take it will translation of a viral rna genome and it cleaves into a polyprotein by the viral proteases that means this viral proteases are playing a very important role and this protease inhibitors are there so the present drugs which i have shown you they are having a protein inhibitor activity so they suspected and they have utilized it now this pictures which they have taken it has worked only partially which could not give a complete now come to the next stage after the proteases are formed then you are going to have the transcription of the replication of viral rna and in this viral rna you can just see nucleotide analogs are there where the nucleotide analog ramps to be that means they have gone with a complete mechanism the students who are there who are learning the pharmacology they must know what is the structure activity relationship structure activity relationship means what like if i am going to take a catecholamine catecholamine means two hydroxyl group on the benzene is a catecholamine if i replace one hydroxyl group with methane and other this thing it become a beta blocker second thing beta 2 blocker then beta 3 blocker that means how the structure and the receptors interact same concept they have used and they have reposed the drug which were antiviral property and they have seen that transcription has happened now only promising things were going on for last four and a half months now but the adverse reactions have started coming for this and that has actually made the questionable drug for the treatment of this thing now this translation and production of structural accessory protein and the viral assembly and they will release so that is how the whole mechanism you must understand now i have shown you this picture before why because to make you understand that it will happen you are able to see the dose limitations i have put in efficacy limited that means the effects if you take a hydroxychloroquine it is inhibited to certain extent 400 mg these are all getting recorded and the, in this record you can recover and just to see this is available on the who uh, therapeutic this thing which is available on a public domain and you can download and you can really see how the drugs discovery has taken place i will be just taking you to the next slide and in this slide just, this is just to make you aware why chloroquine was successful why chloroquine was failure why chloroquine was successful everybody thought because you are actually entering the chloroquine is for the rheumatism treatment and involvement of a receptor so they started doing the inhibition of this thing and that is why they thought that this is going to happen in this sequence of order but when you are going to the immunological data the cytokine profile was not promising and that was a big failure so chloroquine has not become a successful drug only thing is that it has went on that mechanism of action has not supported our concepts now i am just showing you how it works ecosystem if you work because it is like if you say antibiotic mechanism of action in antibiotic mechanism you have a four different type of mechanism static sidal entry into the cell membrane it is also you are able to see that everything has been worked out and where they have seen the cytokine 
uh, starving has taken place and your treatment and your drug has literally speaking reduced the cytokine starving and this cytokine starving from where it is starting t cell to b cell and then macrophage formation the drug host cell is entering and this is all happening now to inhibit this thing you are actually using the trypsin inhibitors and all these inhibitors and these are actually i am just you see i am not an examiner nor i am the question paper reviewer and don't ask me all those questions but in future you are going to have majority of the questions why the cytokine profiling and how it harms the whole this thing you can just see the picture in the down i have given the structure and based on the structure how the receptor activity is bounding based on this you just see one one phase second phase starving third phase inhibition fourth phase the structures which are matching to the receptor this is how you will have to really work on that now i am just coming to one of the closest thing where you have given me such an opportunity the is a kind of viral pneumonia with unprecedented and outbroken this thing which has happened in china but it has lead to the severe respiratory syndrome virus that is called as a sars cov2 and currently please remember this i am underlining currently no licensed antiviral treatment available to prevent human covid vaccine available please make very sure that no licensed drug is available the widespread clinical use of on existing because i have shown you a mechanism in the mechanism where it fits that you have taken as a chance and in this chance you have taken so many drugs and you have used so many this thing but still you are in a doubtful questions now recently clinical evidences did not confirm that means why they have not confirmed in my next slide you will come to know so you will have to see how they are so their their use has to be reassessed remember their use research reassess now i am just uncertainties that means these are and leaving to the future research like ivermectin given at a very low certainty that means there are no what you call evidence based information that it has really speaking given a very high quality of health promotion is still a question mark Hydro hydroxychloroquine it is also there but the mortality and mechanisms and ventilators on that the subject is there to such subject the hydroxychloroquine has resulted same way lancetivi has given a very good result and it has an impact on viral sh shedding that means when i have shown you the picture of mechanism that means it has a viral sh viral shedding then it has cleared the viral clearance and the patient infection rate has come down so ramsidivir has worked up to that stage but later on there was a problem now corticosteroid everyone has taken a corticosteroid and many doctors have prescribed because there was a fever and this fever was uncontrolled but today it has emerged as a big problem and it has called as a long term mortality and function covid survival those who are survived and taken a corticosteroid you are able to see that so many infections coming so this is a unprecedented volume plan because there was an emergency in the emergency everything was there so it was a unplanned clinical trial can you imagine how many more than 3000 clinical trials have taken place and the data which we are presenting to you is based on that 3000 but in spite of this the last center is a international platform trials a recovery solidarity and discovery are better equipped if you have gone with a structured potential clinical trial that means structured potential clinical trials have to be now designed and now then only we can just say whether the above drugs are useful and there is a chance that future research i may also like to draw the attention of some pharmacists who are community pharmacists or hospital pharmacists or whatever the they can have three four big studies one is a pharmacovigilance study that means in the pharmacy outlets what type of drugs have been sold in last two and a half years go by the documentary records you will be coming across there will be a sale of maximum b complexes b complexes in last 15 years have worked actually in a third number 
where the B complexes were sold. Now you can just see they have replaced the third and they have gone to the top again. That means the people have developed a concept that B complexes will improve the immunity. Second, azithromycin, which was least preferred drug, but have been sold. And in antibiotic survey, if you do, this was a, under the almost like a conventional, this thing is a doxycycline that also now re-emerged. So what I suggest you is, you have to develop the antibiotic profiling, pharmacy counter sale, pharmacovigilance, very good dissertation, research work which can have a high publication and this is the documentation which the required for any policy to take in a future so please remember this covid lessons are not only for a textbook or academic interest you have been open for many research programs many thoughts many opportunities you have been giving and you will have to do this type of research surveys and then only you will come please remember even this is my favorite slide what is first? Any drug which is there, my first thing is safety, not a efficacy. Please remember, this, this, this is a uh, big cartoon which has appeared in the current prime minister became a prime minister. The cartoon, real cartoon says that we have a more mobile than the public toilets. But I have used for my purposes, if the mobile phones are given, this person is supposed to enter the toilet and while he is entering the toilet, he receives a phone call that you got a promotion or there is no office or no college. So he will not go inside the toilet and becomes a burden to the society for him, for family and everyone. Who is the culprit? The mobile phone. So I have my question on efficacy and safety, but we have to take a balance between these two and never think that we can actually go about it. And humanity should never allow a repeat. People say that second wave because we were careless. No, it is not like that. We were careless, but we were also immediately taken up. But at least now you learn the lesson. You should wear the mask, follow the government orders, and don't relax till the complete declaration takes place. Now, one, all international agencies, whether it is the United Nations, World Bank, WHO, CDC, ICMR, CIA, everybody strength is that one health approach to prevent the future pandemics. And all these things are possible only if you take care of the human health, animal health, environmental health. You cannot neglect, when I told you in the starting that these three things are very, very important for you to take care of. Then historical people ask sir whether the pandemic will over and how and when the deaths plumbed are maintained low for a period of time it will come down now it is what happening but people are suspecting a phase third phase but the third phase is also because of the delta virus it's emerging but not very fast let us see how it happened but one more thing is that the, when people get tired of living in the fear, that means we are in a fear and we are not going out, we are not this thing. At that time also, you have to learn with the disease and how best we can prevent. Then only we can just see that this virus will definitely prevent you. And we request that cooperation from all the angles will certainly make us face the COVID situation and we can defeat the COVID pandemics, which is very important for the whole country and the citizens, and it will be a greatest contribution to the society and to the nation and the globe. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. It was a nice talk. Yes. Now the session uh, is over to Pushpala Kamita. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, for such an informative and enlightening presentation. Uh, sir, we will take up some questions now. There is one question in the chat box. The question is from uh, Mr. Amol Devre, sir. Uh, he is asking that wiping out the parts of population. Uh -huh. uh, in between the session, he has seen that line. So he want elaboration from you that what is meaning of this line, like wiping out the parts of population. The There was a disorder on a black plague. And in this black plague, the intervention could not be given. The whole population got wiped up. 
in two three countries if we don't do intervention then it is likely to happen in that fashion that is what i have conveyed you that is one of the um, uh, you can just say if i would have time i would have shown all the 20 epidemics where this population wipe out has taken place now i have given you an example of london in the london that incidence has happened in 1665 year i remember the whole population that means 1 lakh population was wiped out only because of the plague they were asked to stay in home they were not allowed to go out till the food was there they have survived when the food and medicine was not there they starved and there was no treatment available the pop, 1 lakh population wiped out in london clear uh, thank you sir thank you sir uh, sir uh, there is one more question from our faculty dr harish kundaikar sir uh, sir want to ask that uh ace inhibitors uh, can you please elaborate on the point of ace inhibitors for the treatment of covid 19 actually what happened is that the covid virus enters from the kidney ace inhibitor is a vehicle so everybody thought this is ace inhibitor if we block or if we can pack then the covid infection may not reach to the lungs so they have immediately started targeting the ace inhibitor drugs but it was the story came out in a different fashion okay yes uh, thank you sir uh, sir there is one more question uh, from our mpharm student that uh, she is asking that the heart failure hypertension kidney patient kidney failure a patient who is taking ace inhibitor does it going to be provide synergistic effect in the treatment of covid infection patient madam i really appreciate that girl and i think your college must take her on your board to give her a very good dissertation on inpatient cases of such cases really i i'll tell you this all these informations would have not come out there was one unethical practices done by russia but it was in the interest of the understanding the disease they have done a post mortem of the person who suffered with a covid when they have done a post mortem every vein artery kidney everything has been removed taken and when they started cutting the veins and all those things there were blocks and this complete block has happened because the covid virus takes away all your oxygen it takes the oxygen lastly from the brain and whatever they left it becomes a solid this thing and once the block is there glomerular failure or any antibody reaction which is anticipated now you are able to see the people who recovered from the covid and they are coming home they are suffering with this heart attacks and because of this block we are not able to suggest you any treatment so they say you give a heparin which is a blood thinner you give some other this thing it may work but it may not work once the your coagulation factor 12 we say ek char bhi agar effect ho gaya to how it will work it will not work so that is where even the clinicians are getting confused for the pharmacological intervention okay thank you sir thank you very much uh, i am sure the participants have benefited by the session Uh, i would like to thank dr b dinesh kumar sir for accepting our invitation on behalf of oriental college of pharmacy and giving us insight on the topic thank you sir for your valuable guidance uh, now i would like to hand over to mr imtiaz ansari sir for the second session thank you again sir thank you everyone sir i will take a leave and good luck to all of you thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you uspalata madam good morning to one and all on behalf of oriental college of pharmacy myself mr intiaz ansari assistant professor department of pharmacology once again welcome you all for the national webinar i feel highly privileged to get opportunity to introduce our second speaker of the day dr udha choudhary sir Dr. Udha Chaudhary sir has done PhD from Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Bareilly, UP. 
currently working as a scientist e in the national institute for the research in the reproductive health parel mumbai he is recognized nationally and globally for his contribution to the field of preclinical toxicology and research in reproductive health as a principal investig uh, investigator sir has completed several uh, research pro projects like development of non human pyramid model for the endothelial hyperplasia effect of metformin on the hormonal metabolic and endometrial profile sir has 70 publication in national and international journals of the reputed sir is also a recipient of the several uh, several fellowship like department of health research human resource development fellowship university of south florida senior research fellowship from the center for the scientific and industrial research india for the phd in the veterinary immunology junior research fellow fellowship from the indian council for the agricultural research india sir is having numerous professional and academic membership like indian immunology society indian society for the study of re reproduction and fertility with this short introduction now i invite and request dr oday choudhary sir to start with the session over to you sir hello is i am audible to everyone yes, yes sir. sir yes okay thank you thank you very much for the invitation at the outset i would like to thank dr shobha rathod and dr said matin sir for giving me this opportunity to talk with you so i will start with sharing my video uh, my slides so they are visible to everyone yes sir yes sir thank you dr ansari sir for my brief introduction uh, so i will be talking about uh, animal models in covid 19 research and vaccine development so as dr dinesh kumar sir has already elaborated most of the things and some of uh, my slides will be overlapping with his uh, so i will go just quick but he has given overall very nice uh, introduction of the topic and how we have to go ahead in the development of pharmaceuticals uh, pharmaceutical therapy for the uh, future uh, preparedness to control this uh, covid 19 pandemic so on the december 31st 2019 we all were uh, ready or we all were excited to welcome the new year 2020 everywhere music funs and parties were going on however in the who office or country office at the china they notified some unusual cases of pneumonia from the uh, hubei province of the uh, wuhan city and that time nobody was knowing what is going to happen in the year 2020 but we know today that it was the very uh, unfortunate thing or it was very uh, dangerous outbreaks of sars cov to uh, severe uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus novel to outbreak and it ultimately causes caused the pandemic uh, of covid 19 19 so uh, as we, i told on 31st december uh, uh, 2019 country office in the china notified the cluster of viral pneumonia and immediately in 10th january the first drop of novel coronavirus was made publicly available and subsequently the times of events occurs and on uh, 20 uh, and on 11 february who announced that covid uh, did they give the this pandemic name covid which is caused by the severe acute respiratory coronavirus 2 and then subsequently uh, the vaccine development was started as you know the modern our first case clinical trial started within the 3 weeks of this outbreak so it was going very fast because the people or the world was knowing the emergency condition and the consequences of this virus on the uh, global economy sociology socio socio economic uh, condition so within the year there are several strategies or with different platform the vaccines were available 
by uh, AstraZeneca, then also by the Moderna, and also Johnson and Johnson. So within the one year, it was in the pandemic speed, the vaccine development, therapeutic development was happen, and it is still going on. It is still evolving because the virus is also evolving. The pattern of the symptoms and the pattern of disease is also evolving, and it is a continuous process. And as a pharma pharmacologist or as a uh, veterinarian or as a medical, everyone has hope to improve the human life during this pandemic. So the coronavirus, as the Dr. Dinesh Kumar sir already told, there are several pandemics. Means it is starting from the bacterial infection to the viral infection. Somehow the bacterial outbreak we can control because we, we are using now very good antibiotics. So uh, the bacterial uh, pandemics are not really happening today, but the viral, it is a challenge because we don't have the uh, proper treatment or proper antiviral uh, therapy for the viruses. And other than the vaccine, there is no other way to control the virus pandemic. And as we know, they are DNA or RNA viruses, they are continuously evolving throughout the life. So uh, the coronavirus first pandemic occurred in 2002, in, again in the China. Uh, so it was also initiated, missed the coronaviruses, they were related to the bat from, so it was, for, it was uh, evidence that it was a origin from the bat. And it affected almost 29 countries in the world. So it was not a really pandemic, it was just epidemic. So the location was in, again, China, and there were around 8,000 patients were confirmed. Out of that, 7,400 was the mortality. So mortality rate was 10%. So it is relatively higher than the COVID-19. And the ventilation support was required about uh, 14 to 20% of the patient. So similarly, in 2012, another uh, coronavirus outbreak occurs, occurred in around 24 countries. So this time it was Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. So intermediate host was, host was camel. And uh, again, it was originated from the bat coronavirus. So it affected almost the four, uh, 24 countries and it is still going on. This pandemic has, uh, although the pandemic, uh, the epidemic has over, but still we can find some isolated cases of mass uh, coronavirus. So till date, there are around 2,500 cases of MERS has been reported. So out of that, almost 871 mortalities are reported. So if you consider the percentage of mortality, then it is a very high uh, percentage. It's almost 30% of people are died because of the MERS uh, or MERS COVID virus infections. So mortality rate is very high and similarly the ventilation support required is also very high. It is almost 80 percent. Yes, you can imagine that almost every patient required the ventilatory support and if it, if it is become pandemic then I don't think world is going to uh, save this. It is uh, such a dangerous virus but it has a, a limited uh, infectivity. And then in 2019 we have got another coronavirus or no coronavirus is called SARS CoV 2, it is also having a 90% genome, 97% genome similarity with the uh, bat coronavirus. So, intermediate host is not yet identified, but it is thought that uh, the pangolins, or in Marathi we call as Thaule Manjar or Vajra Shalki in Hindi. So, that is uh, expected one of the uh, uh, candidate or one of the uh, 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 animal for the intermediate host. And, uh, we know the every part of the world or every country or every island is infected or uh, infected by this uh, virus. So till date, uh, almost 181 million people has been infected with this uh, virus. So there are uh, sorry, uh, it was unmuted. So almost 40, uh, 40 lakh people has been died. Uh, the mortality is around 2% and ventilation support is required around 2 to 3% of the cases. So now we see the how sars cov to uh, host interaction takes place with so how it interact with the host. So Dr. Inesh Mwasar already told about the electronic microscope structure of this virus. So this is the RNA. 
uh, RNA virus uh, with envelope uh, capsid. So it has the uh, uh, it has the spike protein which it interacts with the, our uh, alveolar cells or lung epithelium cells through the angiotensin converting enzyme two. So this spike protein has two domain S1 and S2, and this is the major. Uh, uh, major part of the virus which interact with the host cell or the human cell. So the part which is first interact with the human cell is the obvious the target for the vaccine development because if we have to inhibit the entry of the virus into the cell, then we have to develop uh, vaccines against this part of the protein so that antibody will bind to this and it will neutralize and it, the virus won't be available to enter inside the cell. So the spike protein of this virus interact with the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme to on the host cells and then their uh, binding uh, and their receptor binding domain interacts and then there will be conformation changes and which will ultimately leads to the entry of virus inside the cells through the lysosomes. So as we know, the chloroquine was one of the drug which was supposed to inhibit our infection was thought that it will act on this uh, pathway, but it didn't work. So once virus enter inside the cells, it used the host machinery to replicate, and then it start transcription and translation of viral proteins, different uh, enolo protein, their genome related proteins, and then the uh, capsid protein uh, translated through the Golgi apparatus and uh, Golgi apparatus and reticular endothelial system and then virus is uh, enveloped and the budding will take place and the virus will then uh, uh, come out of the cells and it will be circulated throughout our body and it will go into different organs and it will have its own consequences through the immunological uh, interactions. So how would the host immune system respond to the COVID-19? So we already know a lot of things from the literature. So as I told, the virus enter into the host cell through the ACA receptor, angiotensin converting in receptor, along with uh, this uh, protease. So once it enter into the cell, it sends the cells send the signal or the alarms to the uh, to the body that our one of the cells is got infected by the virus, and the alarms which includes like the viral proteins or the viral DNA, and then other uh, immune cells modulators like IL-1, and there are different uh, degradating product of the cells, which will send the alarm to the immune system or which will send alarm throughout the body that some cells got infected with the virus. So once the virus infected cells will die, but during the process of dying, it will give signals to the immune system so that immune system will get activated the, we know the immune system consists of uh, innate cells as well as uh, adaptive immune response, which include macrophages, dendritic cell, monocyte, T cell, T cell. So all the first line of immune system, innate system, will come to the uh, 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 to the viral infected site, and uh, there will be a mechanism of viral clearing. This virus has to be cleared from the system. So innate immune system will try to clear or try to kill the virus by uh, different mechanisms. So once virus is clear, uh, the immune, uh, immune system will develop the, or if it, after 14 days, it will develop the immune response. And we will be protected in the future. If the immune response is proper, then we will be protected in the future with the same kind of virus. However, in certain condition, the uh, immunological response of the body is too high that it will start creating problem to our body itself because there is no regulation of the feedback or positive mechanism because when there will be inflammation or there is production of pro-inflammatory cytokine at the same time there should be a production of anti-inflammatory cytokine or the immune system should be in a regulated way so that excess inflammation does not occur into the body but there are certain factors like uh, we have already seen that obesity or diabetes or hypertension these are like pro-inflammatory conditions if the person has this uh, comorbidities their immune system is not under the regulation because they have continuous chronic type of inflammation and in that case we have seen there will be a cytokine strong there will be increased production of 
uncontrolled cytokines and then this cytokine will harm to the body it will cause the acute respiratory distress syndromes and multi organ failure so all these complications are not caused by the virus but is caused due to the excess or uncontrolled immune activation into the body and which ultimately leads to the uh, patient into the critical conditions he has to put on the ventilator and they use mostly the non steroidal anti inflammatory or steroidal anti inflammatory drug to control the inflammation uh, apart from this so the, this disease have different form uh, different uh, forms so apart from the uh, this in the children there is another form is observed like it is called as uh, multiple inflammatory syndromes in the children so uh, these syndromes develop after 4 to 6 week of virus this means the body of uh, the children are infected but Uh, when the syndromes develop, that time they don't have the infection, but somehow the exact cause is not known. But after uh, three to four weeks of the infection, children develop in relatively less number of children. It is a very rare to rare condition, which is uh, compared to the Kawasaki syndrome in the children. But this is also one of the presentation in the children, and that is why we have to be more cautious about the children because third wave there are some prediction or there are some. that telling the children will get going to infect because they are not vaccinated uh, so now what are the clinical presentation already we have seen but just brief you so there are different forms of the disease like asymptomatic or pre symptomatic then we have mild illness moderate illness severe illness and critical illness and based on this symptoms we have different uh, therapeutic strategy like antiviral if it in the initial phase of the uh, virus replication the antiviral will work so because you can see the uh, progression of disease is almost uh, 14 to 15 days so within the one week the virus replication is more and that time your antivirals like mostly the remdesivir it will work but in the severe or critical illness the inflammation is the major culprit so mostly the anti inflammatory therapy will work but till as we know till date there is no standard line of treatment is available so this was the pandemic it was the emergency situation so clinicians were treating based on the clinical symptoms and different modalities or different uh, uh, recommendation has emerging i think in the monthly or two monthly basis so based on the evidences the treatment strategy is changing and that's why it is very challenging so what are the risk factors of for covid 19 mortality because most of the time we are looking in the second wave we saw there was a lot of mortality so this study they have uh, done in almost to, uh, i think 1 million people so out of the 10000 mortality they have reported and based on they have mortality they have categorized like uh, high body mass is one of the major risk factor then uh, advanced age means you can see the 80 and above there is almost uh, 20 percent, uh, 20 time more higher chance of uh, mortality, and that's how we have seen in the European countries. Most of the first wave, most of the Ill, uh, older people were dying. Similarly, uh, male are more prone. Means are almost two time more prone for the mortality or more prone to the infection as compared to the females. And similarly, we know the uncontrolled diabetes and chronic heart disease, then strokes and dementia. So these are the more major risk factors which increase the A risk of mortality almost two to three fold higher as compared to the uh, normal uh, individual which is having no not any comorbidities. So now uh, it is very challenging, Miss, from the pharmacological point of view. We have to see some definitive treatment or some treatment which can help because whatever treatment we are following, they are based on different uh, evidences. So this study was conducted. Uh, it was it was a very big consortium study where they studied the interaction of viral protein with the human protein. So it is very busy site, but uh, the this uh, red dot indicates the viral protein and the uh, this uh, other show the interaction of this viral protein with the human protein. So almost out of twenty nine protein, twenty six proteins were in vitro uh, translated. and in the different uh, cells they studied its interaction these interactions are important to identify some pharmacological uh, intervention or some pharmacological drugs for 
uh, inhibiting uh, this virus replication. And based on uh, this interaction, there are about 70 drugs they have identified with this interaction, preclinical means in the in silico base. And out of that, almost 28 drugs are under FDA approval, or they are already used so that this drug can be repositioned. And almost 25 to 25 percent drugs they are in the preclinical stage or in the clinical uh, trial. So they have recommended different uh, drugs uh, for uh, the control of this uh, coronavirus. And these are all in the in vitro or artificial intelligence based approaches. We have to validate these drugs in in vitro animal culture or in human model. And then only it will go into the clinical trials or it then can be used for the humans. So another one important aspect of controlling COVID-19 or any viral infection is the vaccine. Because vaccine is the only way to control uh, the, uh, the global population. And as you are aware, there was no vaccine available. So vaccine has to be developed into the pandemic stage. So we know the normal traditional way of development of vaccine and it's almost take eight to 10 years because there are different phases in the vaccine development. There are like preclinical stage. Then if the preclinical stage is done, then it will go into the phase one, phase two, phase three, then it will be the regulatory license. And then phase four, we will see the overall survey means what is the effect or what is the outcome of this vaccine in the population. So this is the lengthy process. And in case of pandemic, we don't have time to follow this all uh, the uh, processes, but the safety is important. I mean, even if it is a pandemic, we have to develop vaccine in the pandemic speed, but with the taking all the precautions, all the safety and all the regulatory issue. So the uh, so develop the vaccine in the pandemic speed is not one company job. I mean, one can, this is in traditional way, only one company develop the vaccine in different platform, but if in the pandemic speed, Everyone means globally, we have to come together. Everyone has to work in different aspects so that we can get vaccine in the uh, within the short period of time. So you can see in case of the outbreak or in case of the pandemic, all phases are overlapping. This preclinical study will be also going on at the same time. Some uh, based on the preclinical study, they will start, start limited clinical study. At the same time, they will uh, start the manufacturing of doses because we can't wait till the outcome is come, but we have to take risks and we have to keep uh, everything ready in our hand because once the uh, trials is over and if it is effective, we should not again go back and then start manufacturing. So uh, development of vaccine in, in the pandemic is overlapping and, and it is a global uh, uh, global collaboration because as we know the Covishield uh, the example take another example of Covishield it was generated by AstraZeneca in the Oxford University so vaccine was prepared there then preclinical trials were done in the Europe clinical trials done in the Brazil and the uh, vaccine production was done in the India so all came together all everyone worked so that within the one year we got the vaccine and that's how it has to work during the pandemic. Uh, situation to bring the vaccine within the very short period of time. So now what are the vaccines available for the COVID-19? So there are different platforms which are available and all platforms are efficacious, they are safe and there should not be have any doubt about this vaccine. So first platform is adenovirus vector based. They are the chimpanzee based non-replicating adenovirus. So they infect our uh, cells and these uh, non-replicating adenovirus are encapsulated with uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. So as you know, the spike protein is the first to interact with the host immune cells. So immune, system, uh, immune response against spike protein is important uh, for the inducing immunity. So the spike protein, the adenovirus, which is carrying the DNA of spike protein enter into the cell, then the, it will enter into the nucleus, then the spike protein, you will use the human host cell machinery. It will be translated in, transcribed into the mRNA and then mRNA will through the reticular endocrine system, develop the spike protein and this spike protein will be presented on the cells. And as it is foreign, the immune response will recognize and antibody will produce. And subsequently in the future, it will get the actual viral infection 
the antibody will be ready to fight against it. And that's how we will not even recognize that I was getting infection or not. So based on this uh, platform, there are four vaccines currently available which are in the use. So one is Ox Oxford AstraZeneca, that is also called as Covishield in India. Then we have Johnson & Johnson. Then we have Sputnik V from the Russia and then CanSino from the uh, in Canada. So uh, four platforms, four vaccines are currently available globally uh, by using this platform. The another platform is mRNA based vaccine. So here uh, the whole, uh, the virus is uh, not, or the DNA is not, or any non-replicating virus is not used. So here uh, they have used lipid nanoparticles. So it is like nanoparticle based vaccine encapsulated with preform mRNA. Uh, so EMR, this liposome will fuse with the uh, host cell and already mRNA is there. Means there, is, there is no need of the transcription. The mRNA is directly translated through the ribo, uh, rib, ribose nuclear nuclear system and the spike protein will be uh, presented on the host cell. So as yeah, it is antigenic, so this spike protein antibody will raise against this spike protein and it will be protective. So this mRNA based vaccine, we have two vaccines currently available globally. One is Moderna mRNA 1273 and another is Pfizer BioNTech BNT 162B2. So these are the uh, vaccines. So one of the major limitation of this vaccine, or I could say limitation, but it has to be stored in under minus 20 condition. And in our India, we don't have that much facility to store under uh, minus 70 condition. But this vaccine can be stored at two to four degrees Celsius, but all these vaccines are efficacious and they are safe. And another approach is inactivated virus vaccine. So a uh, whole virus particle is inactivated by the chemical uh, methods. And then along with the adjuvant, they can induce the immune response. So using this platform, we have three vaccines globally available. One, our own indigenous co-vaccine, which is developed by ICMR and Bharat Biotech. Then we have CoronaVac from China and CoviVac from the uh, Russia. So at present, there are almost nine to 10 different vaccines globally. They are available and they are using uh, through the WHO platform. They are so this, all the countries should get vaccines because this is a pandemic. We were, one, country is, uh, one country doesn't mean that all world is going to be wiped out. This, uh, this virus has to be eliminated from the globe. Then only everyone is safe. And WHO is working that every country, see whether it is poor or it is uh, high income country, developed country or developing country, everyone should get vaccine. And, it is the requirement and it is the solidarity responsibility of all global citizens. So uh, if you see the BioCovid therapeutic development tracker, and you will amazing to see there are around 225 vaccines are there in the preclinical trials. There are around 240 antivirus and 373 are the treatment modality. So this pandemic, is still going on and there are different uh, molecules or different uh, strategies are uh, there under the development. So at present, almost 838 unique active compounds are under development. So as we all know, whenever there is development of any uh, molecules or any treatment, it has to be safe and the safety or its efficacy has been mostly tested in the in vitro and in vivo model. And at present, we have a lot of molecules uh, under pipeline. So, uh, so before going to the animal model, when we screen the compound, we have to use the alternative to the animal use. Means most of the time, because we have a lot of compound and all compounds are not that effective, but to uh, check its efficacy, we have to use uh, the different in, uh, in vitro models like 3D culture, then the organoid culture or cell culture to screen the molecule and only those molecules which are uh, efficient or which has uh, the potency to translate it into the preclinical stage or in the animal stage, they go into the animal. And even if you are using animal for your preclinical uh, drug toxicity study or any study, we have to follow the 3R. Means 
it is not like that the animals are there and there you can do all kind of study it is not uh, like that you have to follow some ethics some kind of guideline so one of the major important guideline is the you have to follow the 3r must first you have to see the replacement for the animals means whenever you are doing some experiment and if it is possible to do in other uh, non animal uh, resources like the organ agriculture then first we tried on that but if it is inevitable that we have to use the animal then you have to see the reduction means we have to reduce the number of animal we have to do the proper statistical analysis that these number of animals are required and that will give some significant uh, finding so that can be applicable for the uh, going study into the next level and also we have to do the refinements we have to uh, minimize the stress in the animal because if the animal is in the stress then the result what we are going to get are not uh, that quality or they are not going to uh, applicable for the clinical trials because most of the study failure occurs because we are not properly doing the refinement we are not doing proper uh, handling of the animal so you have to take care of all these issues before going to the uh, animal studies so now what are the animal models what are the characteristics of animal model for the covid 19 so first the animal model should have the similarity with human anatomy and respiratory physiology because this is the respiratory tract infection so the anatomically as well as the respiratory physiology should be similar so that we can develop the similar kind of uh, disease in this model then as we know the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is required for viral entry into the cell so the homology or the amino acid sequence between the human and the animal should be similar or at the par with the sequence similarity then only the virus will infect to the animal cell so this is very important then the viral replication characteristics means how viral replicate in which organ it is replicate how its pathogenesis starting from the respiratory tract to the gastrointestinal tract or in the other body so that should have the similarity between the human and the animal then the immune response properties because any foreign or any virus is going to tackle by the immune response so immune response characteristics should be similar if immune response is very good in the some animals so there won't be any clinical symptoms or there won't be any disease progression so the immune response property should be similar or they should have similarity with the human then the manifestation of clinical disease because all the symptom what we have seen should be replicated into the animals then only you can study for its therapeutic applications or its vaccine efficacy so the manifestation should be similar then the availability of animal in globally because in case of pandemic all collaboration it is working through the collaboration so it is not like that the animal is available in brazil and we can't do study in the india or we can't replicate or it is difficult to export animals so the animal should be available globally then the size of animal also matter because you have to do studies in the laboratory conditions you can't do studies on the elephant because it is like very not possible so the size it should be and daily it should be take care by the veterinary services present in the animal facility or so we have to think of the size of the animal also and then animal should be available in the contact research organization cost and timeline because in case of covid 19 we can't do study in every lab because it's required bio safety level cabinet 4 it is uh, it is a highly pathogenic organism so each lab or each cro can't do covid 19 research or covid 19 efficiency because we should have that infrastructure we should have that regulatory uh, regulatory requirement for the highly pathogenic viruses so now we will see uh, how the host diversity or how the sars cov infection occurs in the uh, different animals so as we know the sars cov Two has almost 97 similarity with bat corona virus. So it is thought that uh, SARS-CoV-2 has been related from the bat, but intermediate host uh, we have not yet identified. But as you know, pangolin and snake. So these were the animals which were there in the wet market of Wuhan. 
so it has been thought that this might be the intermediate course for the sars cov 2 so once sars cov 2 uh, get infection in the human so till that the natural infection has been reported in these animals like in the mink this is a far animal and mink has been also reported mink can transmit to the human similarly the wild animal like tiger and lions those who are in the zoo they have reported uh, the covid 19 or uh, sars cov 2 infection and also the pet animal like cat and dog they have reported the natural infections from the human then we have animals like uh, mouse that is a transgenic mouse not the wild mouse hamster cat ferrets primates and tissue these were experimentally infected with the sars cov 2 infection means when they were inoculated with virus they showed the symptoms or the uh, viral replication in their body and we have another set of animals like pig chicken rabbit Uh, and guinea pigs as well as turkey so when virus was given to them or when virus was inoculated in these animal they don't show any symptoms of uh, virus replications or any symptoms related to the covid 19 uh, covid 19 virus uh, so now coming to the ferrets so ferrets are the animals which is there in the carnivora family so these are the like फेरेस्ट लुक जो इस नेवले बोलते हैं उस टाइप के दिखते हैं सो दे आर इन द फैमिली ऑफ कार्नी हो रहा मस्टलिटी दे आर दे दिस एनिमल्स आर यूज इन यूरोप एज अ पेट एनिमल सो द एवरेज लेंथ इज अराउंड 51 सेंटीमीटर देयर वेट इज बिटवीन 0.7 टू 2 केजी सो दे आर लाइक रैबिट साइज देयर नेचुरल लाइफ स्पैन इज 7 टू 10 ईयर सेक्सुअल मैच्योरिटी इज Four to twelve months. So breeding life is two to five years. Their gestation period is forty-two days, and they give a litter size of eight, average one to eighty. And one most important feature of this animal that they don't have sweat gland. So the recommended temperature range for the adult adult junior is between four to eighteen degrees Celsius. Because most of our conventional animal house or whatever CPC is a guideline we have. Uh, we keep animal in range between 20 to 22 degrees Celsius, but in case of ferrets, we require relatively lower temperature for their uh, sustenance because they don't have the sweat gland, so they don't have the thermoregulatory uh, activity. So why uh, these ferrets are suitable animal model for the COVID-19 research? So ferrets are susceptible to many human respiratory tract infection. Means these ferrets has been used for the influenza research. then syncytial virus para influenza and other corona viruses so like we have previously sars cov and mers cov so uh, it has similarity with the uh, the respiratory tract or the uh, lung similarity with the human so they also express the uh, similar domain of the ac2 receptor means adenosine converting to enzymes and interact with the sars cov protein so it is the homologous so it is one of the major requirement to uh, infect the host cell then the ferrets also produce the clinical signs of viral diseases uh, like fever uh, then runny nose then pneumonia all uh, the symptoms are developed in the ferrets and this ac is mainly expressed on the type 2 immunocytes which is the major target of uh, virus entry into the uh, bronchial lung uh, or bronchus or the in the lungs and ferret also able to transmit virus efficiently to uninfected ferrets in the excremental setting this one uh, they can uh, with the close contact they can transmit virus from one infected animal to another uninfected animal so it is like same human with that we are transmitting virus Uh, so this sars has been used in uh, understanding the pathogenesis of the virus then it has been used for different screening of the different uh, antivirals or different drugs and also the vaccination so we will see some references on how these animals has been used for the covid 19 research so here you can see uh, the infected are red and controls are uh, the black so we can see the post infection how the temperatures means they are experiencing the fever then also the virus has been uh, 
detected in different body organ like nasal trachea, trachea, lung, kidney, and intestine of different day of infection, like four day of infection, eight day of infection, how the infection is very severe during the eight day, and then it is very uh, slowly getting uh, reduced. And these are the control animals where we can't see any infection. Similarly, viral virus were isolated from these organs and then they did viral titer. So you can see the virus is highly present in the nasal turbinate wound, which is the respiratory tract symptom uh, system. And this is the control where you can find any infections. And also the this uh, they are able to neutralize the uh, the serum from the this animal is able to neutralize the virus. And similarly, if you see the histology, these are the from control animal versus the animal which were infected with SARS-CoV-2. So this staining, red staining, you can see the nasal turbinate, there is virus particle, the trachea, lungs, and intestine. So these are the major organs in human also which get affected with the SARS-CoV-2. So they are show, showing similar uh, viral host interaction or similar pathology uh, as compared to the human. So similarly, this uh, uh, carrots has been used for the studying the efficacy of novel viruses like, like this is nanoparticle based uh, vaccines. So they have coated ferritin nanoparticles with uh, receptor binding domain of the virus. And then they immunized the ferrets and then they studied the effects of serum neutralization titer. So uh, this, this purple shows the adjunct only, then receptor binding domain nanoparticle by the intramuscular route, and then receptor binding domain of the virus nanoparticle through intramuscular and intranasal routes. And you can see at the 28 day, both the groups were able to neutralize this the serum from this animal were able to neutralize the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So we show that they can also induce the immune system and this immune system is able to neutralize the virus. Similarly, they have seen the clinical parameters like temperature, then body weight, the body weight changes. So you can see the adjunct only there is significant increase in the body temperature means they were having expressing fever, then there is body weight loss, and then the viral titer was increased in the uh, adjunct only group as compared to the those who are given with the vaccine. So vaccine group you can see. They have uh, temperature, normal temperature, their body weight is maintained, and also their uh, nasal from the nasal test, viral titer were less. So this shows the importance of this model in uh, identifying the different vaccine candidates. So another uh, important animal model which shows the infectivity is Syrian hamster. So a Syrian hamster is uh, in the order of Rodentia. So their scientific name is Morsus aeratisus. And uh, if you see their average length is uh, 15 centimeter, body weight is between 175 to 25 grams. So natural lifespan is two to three year. Age of sexual maturity is four to six weeks. And gestation period is between 15 to 18 days. And the liter size is 4 to 12 and average is 7 to 8. And recommended temperature for its housing is between 20 to 22. So how these um, uh, models are suitable? So golden Syrian hamsters are susceptible to SARS-CoV-2, this uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus as well as this novel coronavirus. But uh, Syrian hamster is not susceptible to the MERS coronavirus because MERS coronavirus uses different receptor for their entry in the cells as compared to the SARS-CoV virus and SARS-CoV-2 virus. So comparison with hamster, this ACA receptor is homologous in almost 29 amino acid sequence. So it is conserved between the human and hamster. And that's how hamster get infected with SARS-CoV-2 viruses. So also it's in you know, the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein interact with uh, different domains and it is high infectivity. Uh, and then mostly it into in the uh, epithelium cell of the lungs. So how the hamster has been used to understand the pathogenesis and transmission of SARS-CoV-2. So uh, this is the study where they have 
uh, inoculated uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus into the animals, and then they studied the how the virus titer in different organs, and they mostly found it in the lungs. So similarly, as we know, uh, the COVID virus uh, infectivities differ from male to female. So similar kind of study were also done in the Syrian hamster, where the male and female were given intranasally virus, and then they monitor the disease progressions, and then how it is differ, different from male versus female. And you can see their results that the infectivity or the clinical signs of the infections were more severe in males. So this pink bar represent male and this blue bar represent female. So you can see all the symptoms were uh, very severe in the male as compared to the female. So this proves that these models, they show the species, uh, they show the gender specific effects and that they can be used uh, very well for the studying this susceptibility in male versus female, means how the virus interacts and how the virus progression occurs in female and what are the determinants in the female which are protecting uh, as compared to the male. So that can be studied using this model. And similarly, as Dr. Dinesh Kumar sir already said, our indigenous Tico vaccine vex, uh, virus vaccine, which is developed by Bharat Biotech and ICMR, was also tested in the uh, this golden hamster. So this group were immunized with SARS-CoV-2 uh, co-vaccine vaccine, and this is the placebo. And you can see the immune response were raised in these vaccinated animals. And when they were challenged with the live virus, we can see they were protected uh, by the antibodies and you can see minimum damage into the liver. However, you can see the placebo, those were not immunized with the co-vaccine. You can see severe pathology changes in the uh, lungs and uh, some animals were dying. So, uh, so we have seen ferrets, then we have Syrian hamsters, they were the animal model who is susceptible to COVID. So apart from the one where, which is globally available or very famous laboratory animal is the mouse. But bad news is that the wild mouse is not uh, uh, susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 right now. Why it is not susceptible, that we will see in the subsequent slide. So this is the uh, classification of rodents and these are the housing characteristics of uh, uh, laboratory rodents, so it is that we all uh, know very well. So I told the mouse or wild mouse is not susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 because if you will see the amino acid uh, uh, domain of uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, this is the uh, domain like lysine, aspirin, then the, these lysine molecules, they are amino acid sequence. So if you see the mouse, it is completely different. We see here it is K-lysine, here it is aspiragine. So here it is uh, aspartic acid, so it is same. But uh, the major difference is there in the uh, receptor binding domain, which they are a hydrophilic repulsion. So the virus and host cell interaction cannot take place because of the difference in the amino acid sequence of uh, human angiotensin converting enzyme 2 versus the mouse angiotensin converting enzyme 2. So to get infectivity of SARS-CoV-2 in the mice, we have to develop a transgenic mouse model because we have to then we have to insert the human uh, human angiotensin converting enzyme into the mice through the different uh, technologies, and once they will express the human uh, as, uh, human angiotensin converting enzyme, then only they get infected with the SARS-CoV-2. So there are different strategies for development of transgenic animals. Means this is uh, one strategy where the retrovirus were uh, injected into the virus during the eight cell embryo mice. Means, means we have to insert the human angiotensin converting enzyme along with retrovirus, and then the offspring which will develop will be we have to screen for uh, this receptor, and that this, this mice will be the uh, susceptible to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Similarly, another mechanism that we have to inject directly for gene of interest into the uh, eggs or in the pronuclear 
stress in the fertilized eggs and then this we have to implant into the pseudo pregnant mice and then subsequently offspring we have to screen for the presence of uh, the angiotensin converting enzyme and similarly the another approach where we have to embryonic stem cells we have to inject with the angiotensin converting enzyme and then the, we will get transgenic chimeric uh, mice that we can use for the studying further uh, virus pathogenesis and we also have the this this as your mechanism is a casper technology where also you can develop the uh, transgenic mice so the transgenic mice has been studied for the pathogenicity of uh, sars cov 2 so we can see here these are the uh, body weight changes in the wild mice those who are not transgenic but as compared to the transgenic you can see these are the H, uh, human angiotensin converting enzyme to hb2 transgenic mice so when they were infected with sars cov 2 we can see there is reduction in the body weight similarly you can see the virus titer in different or uh, increased virus titer in the transgenic animal the virus were isolated and did the scanning electron microscopy and also if you will see the uh, virus uh, load in different uh, tissue like heart liver spleen lung kidney brain and intestine and you can find most of the viral load is there in the lung and in the intestine so as we know these are the major organs which 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 uh, sars cov 2 get infected so we can see similarly kind of uh, infectivity uh, in this transgenic mice and which cannot be seen in the wild mice similarly the transgenic mice has been used uh, for the other studying pathogenesis means you have to see the different how the virus uh, pathogenesis or how symptoms are observing and also when this virus were infected and then they were challenged with the virus uh, they survived means those who are have uh, so those who are survived but however those virus uh, those were those mice were challenged with the virus were died and the virus was affected and infected in other so the infectivity is increasing uh, with the generation or with the uh, infection from one animal to another animal so they are showing the uh, similar characteristics as with the human but one of the major disadvantage of this model is that we are uh, expressing transgenically but sometimes they are also expressing the other organs like now you can see the number viral copy in different organs and you can see the these mice were died because of the involvement in the brain but actually if you see the human condition uh, there are no uh, uh, like uh, neurological condition but in this mice there are neurological condition also observed so these are one of the disadvantage that sometime will get off target effect of uh, this uh, transgenic mice because the receptor is expressed in the every organ so to avoid this uh, uh, disadvantage we have to go most closely animal model and as you know human non human primates or the monkey they are most closely to the human beings so this is the family tree of non human primates so we have the primates family like with gorilla apes and chimpanzee so they are endangered species so we can't do study in the primates or they are like ape family but uh, another category is the non human primate one like uh, macca muleta then we have rhesus or bullet monkey which are 92% similarity with the human and we have new world uh, monkeys like uh, marmosets and these primates so that can be also used so non human primate model are phylogenetically closest to the human with 93.5% genome similarity so exposure of sars cov 2 in animal primate so mild to severe infection means it is not that much severe as we see in the human but they have the symptom similar to the mild to severe diseases of human so symptoms like pneumonia elevated body temperature viral shedding and immune cell infiltration were reported in the lungs in the non human primate model and despite significant homology with ac receptor between human and non human primate differences were observed in viral latency and 
clinical feature of COVID-19. So it is going to happen because we know the comorbidity conditions are more prone, more uh, high in the human population because most of the non primates they are not in the comorbid condition. So the viral latency and viral clinical features are not that much similar in case of the advanced disease, but we can recalculate the uh, symptoms of mild and severe infection. So this study has been done to identify the uh, if, uh, viral replication or viral pathogenesis in different models like I told this marmoset, these are the new world monkey and they have, we have Sinomongus monkey and this is monkey, they are old one monkey or they are non-human primates. So you, you can see this yellow bar, most of the viral pathogenesis is occurs in Sinomongus as well as rhesus monkey. So you can see all lung, trachea, liver, uh, they are more infected uh, in monkeys as compared to marmocytes with very limited infectivity in marmots. So it was concluded that the cyanomolgus and rhesus monkeys are the non-human primate model for testing the viral efficacy and the other drugs. So they are, that is that uh, most of the studies which has been done on the non-human primate models are mostly on cyanomolgus and rhesus monkeys. So this is the trial of Moderna vaccine that the, we know mRNA 1273 was published in the Journal of Medicine. And you can see the uh, virus, the vaccines uh, were tested in different uh, doses like 10 microgram as well as 100 microgram. And you can see the uh, antibody IgG binding response. So this is before vaccination. And this is the uh, first dose of vaccination and the second dose. You can see the increased level of the antibody uh, IgG immune response and similarly these are the neutralizing this actual neutralizing antibody so as compared to the uh, 10 microgram 100 microgram was higher and you can see there is increased uh, neutralizing titer with first and second dose and similarly you can see the viral neutralization by this uh, different doses so this is conversion serum is those you know, human who are infected that it we are seeing the antibody therapy so this is the convalent serum. So it is giving almost similar uh, kind of uh, trends. So based on these preclinical trials, these vaccines were then entered into the uh, clinical trials and now it is globally used. So similarly, our co-vaccine also tried on the research market at uh, National Institute of Virology, Pune. And there also they did uh, try different adjuvant as well as different dose. So the first group was placebo, is without any vaccine. The second group was six microgram with uh, adjuvant ease. Then another is three microgram adjuvant B. So they tried different two adjuvants. So as you know, co-vaccine is inactivated vaccine. So it requires a uh, very strong or very good adjuvant to induce the immune responses. So they tried two different formulation of adjuvant. And, uh, and then group C was uh, given six microgram plus adjuvant B. So we know TLR7 and 8 has been used as adjuvant in the co-vaccine. And then they studied the, uh, then they injected this vaccine into the research macaque and then they studied the immune response. And you can see after second dose vaccination, the six milligram plus adjuvant B was given better immune response as compared to the other. So, uh, the final product that we are getting is six microgram of uh, uh, this inactivated vaccines with adjuvant B, which is there now used uh, globally or within the India. So non-human primate models has also studied for the um, pharmacological intervention like uh, antiviral drug Remdesivir. They were also studied for the uh, anti-parasitic uh, parasitic drugs which is chloroquine. So uh, this study is published in the Nature where they have studied the effect of remdesivir in uh, non-human primate models. So uh, this shows the red shows the remdesivir treatment and black black shows the vehicle treatment. So when remdesivir was given uh, during the early phase of the infections, you can see there was a reduction in the clinical score in the monkey as compared to the placebo. So as we know, the initial 
replication takes place of virus during the very initial phase and remdesivir also you know also work if it is given in the early in the infection like within the seven uh, days of the infection in the latter phase we know the inflammatory mechanism is the most predominant so that time remdesivir does not work there steroid work better so here from this study also it has been shown that in the early phase of the infection uh, this uh, clinical score is significantly lower and similarly you can see here the cumulative x-ray score or the pneumonia there is uh, reduction in the pneumonia or the uh, pneumonia in remdesivir as uh, remdesivir treated non home primate as compared to the vehicle treated so based on this finding ultimately remdesivir was used or it was previously from also it was used but it was also effective for the sars cov 2 infections and similarly virus load uh, they have studied in different organs uh, and you can see the red bar is in, which is significantly lower as compared to the vehicle treatment also uh, we also contributed one review article in indian journal of medical research uh, where we have summarized all these animal uh, models and uh, this is available in free indian journal of medical research so this is the summary of, of all the animal model which are susceptible to the corona viruses like we know the human has this characteristics of the feature from 1 to 5 day and then 5 to 10 day they have different uh, clinical feature so similarly in the animal models with 1 to 5 day or symptom they have seen the 5 to 10 10 to 30, uh, 15 days how they were uh, showing symptoms that uh, has been summarized in this paper so similarly hamster then these are transgenic mice they have also is african green mice the solgo cyanomolgus macaque and this is macaque so these are the uh, known animal species which get uh, infected by the uh, infections and the timeline for the development of symptoms and then the how much dose of uh, virus were infected and the uh, subsequent the symptoms of uh, this virus so coming to the summary so understanding the pathophysiology or therapeutic intervention of covid we have to ask first question whether i have to perform in vivo or in vitro study so if i want to perform the in vitro study then we need not go to the animal model then we have to ask the question uh, whether we have, have to mimic the human physiological condition if yes then you have to go the organoid cultures like bronchial lung kidney liver intestine and blood vessel where the ec2 receptor expression is there so using this organoid model you can study or you can screen the pharmacological interventions or pharmacological therapy against the covid 19 and also if you want to do the effectivity of the virus because if you have to infect the virus into the then you have to go for the cell culture like a different Yes, here we have the cell, then intestinal epithelial cells. So there are different viral cell lines. So there we can infect these uh, cell lines with the virus, and then you can get uh, the virus copy number or the virus particle, and then you can study uh, their uh, uh, immune response or whatever you want to do for sequencing of the virus. But if you want to use the in vivo study, then you have to ask question whether I need. large population of animal or i need small population of animal so if you need large population of animal to study the pathogenicity then obviously you should go for the smaller animal model like transgenic mice and serial hamster so here you can do uh, with the large number of uh, animal model you can do the study but if you have to mimic the uh, human like conditions then you have to go for the non human primate model but uh, one of the disadvantages that we need to Uh, limit because they are very costly their maintenance cost is very high they require specific and uh, housing conditions and also you require the uh, bsl4 laboratory if you are working under covid so in that case it is only you are very sure about your finding interest more animal then only we should go in the limited number of animal in the non human primate studies because this study will directly then translated into the clinical trials and also we have another like ferrets and cat they also show uh, some some features of the symptoms of uh, human condition so this is uh, an overall summary of the animal models and the strategy how to go 
uh, about uh, different using different model for the COVID-19 research. So uh, this is uh, this is not the first pandemic and it is not going to be last. So we have to always prepare this. Everyone has to prepare and there are going to be the future pandemics because as Dr. Dinesh said, about, it is starting from the black plague to the cholera and so many bacterial infections can and in the recent century we have seen the Spanish flu in 2018 there was Spanish flu which was transmitted from duck to the human and throughout the century we have different types of influenza outbreaks like Asian influenza, Hong Kong influenza and next influenza pandemic when is going to happen we don't know but there are misophonic cases of influenza, bird flu are coming everywhere, every country so they are containing with the specific zone, but you know this, uh, these are the RNA viruses and so many genetic recombination reassertion takes place and they come, each time they come with, with new strategy because virus also has to survive, it has to uh, be there in on this earth. So they come with different strategy, different assortment and then they cause pandemic. Similarly, we have seen this sars go to because it started from 2002, then 2012, now 2019 and uh, and we have seen different types of mutations they are coming in 2020 and 21 and it is going on it is not stopping so we have to prepare or at the same time we have to be more responsible as well because this earth is not belongs to us only and as dr dinesh uh, has mentioned earlier that one health is now very important means in every international platform you will go people are talking about the one health because this has opened a new dimension because uh, our generation we have because we don't have don't know what was happened during the spanish flu but at least our generation we have seen that how the pandemics are and how it has global social or economic impact on the world and how the everyone is getting infected so now it is the good time that we have to think about one health this earth belongs to everyone and everyone has to see live coordinately because most of the species are going extinct most of the forests are getting deforested and that's how the interaction human interactions they are coming with the animal and the new form of the disease are developing so we have to think very deliberately on this issue and everyone has to collaborate everyone has to come together uh, for sustainable development or the future to come uh, for their safety so uh, this is the illustration how to prevent influenza in 1980. So that time it was the uh, gauze mask we were used. That gauze mask, uh, how to use this gauze mask to prevent the infections, and then the guideline was given. And then come to the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. We know how to let's stop it, and we know we are following all these guidelines, and we should follow. This is, it is not yet over. We are continuously following. And uh, these are the guidelines. At least we understand how the disease progression or how disease transmit from one to another evidences based on our knowledge. So we are able to at least prevent or we are able to stop uh, this uh, pandemic or this virus. But we have to think future also because sometimes something will happen and uh, we don't know how to stop it. It's because it is going to happen or it will happen because it is the kind of genetic reassertion takes place or kind of virus is coming or kind of disease is coming. Uh, in the future, sometimes we, we don't know how to stop it. So the One Health is very important that we know environment, we know the animal and we know the human so that we will best prepare for the future pandemic. So with this, I thank you and I close uh, my session with this uh, beautiful cartoon where the sun uh, the chimpanzee son asked that when we will get vaccinated, dad said, please be patient, my child, the vaccine is still being tested in human. And we know this is the like re reverse clinical pharmacology from human to it is going towards the animal. So thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, there, sir. Uh, there is a one question from the Amul, sir. Uh, yes. It is regarding the vaccination. Uh, asking that what about the person who are on the immunosuppressants uh, 
in this mm-hmm. case if the vaccine is to be taken then what uh, what is the criteria required uh, so uh, the immunosuppression means they are in the continuous immunosuppression so they have chances that uh, but so the, this vaccines are safe because the vaccine whatever platform we are using uh, they are not the live uh, live viruses so even immunosuppression person can take the vaccine because i think they are giving to all uh, diabetes or those who are having comorbidities because it is not a live uh, vaccine so it is just a part of the vaccine that will induce some immunosuppression there will be some reaction because body will try to uh, set up the innate immune response of the immunological so some part, sort of inflammation will be there but i don't think there will be any problem uh, in the immunosuppression individual okay thank you sir now another question from uh, our m farm student uh, she is asking that uh, spike protein based vaccine is really going to be effective against the delta uh, variants because sir if the person is going to the come in contact with the covid 19 there is a chance of the formation of whole sars co2 uh, uh, in body due to various kind of the mutation but we had produce uh, vaccine like the co shield in which immune responses only against the spike proteins so can't we say that the co vaccine Is the there is lot of disturbance. There is lot of disturbance. Hello. Hello. Ah. Okay. Uh, sir, one question from our M Farm student. Hmm. She is asking that uh, regarding the co vaccine. Hmm. So, uh, co vaccine. Uh, is the best vaccine amongst all the vaccine because it has used whole uh, SARS COVID. to for the vaccine production so all vaccines are good because sars cov 2 means the vaccine which was developed by the co vaccine is the initial virus means when it was isolated in the uh, june uh, june so that was inactivated and that has with now that it has all the spike protein but similarly the other spike protein which are there in the adenovirus based vaccine or the mrna based uh, vaccines so they have study has come so they are showing the cross Infectivity or cross immunity means between the different uh, variants. So it is not like that. This co-vaccine mm-hmm. is the best. All vaccines are they are studying and they are effective against the uh, Delta variants also. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So Sandhya, I hope uh, you get uh, you got your answer. So <clears throat> so there is a. Uh, query from the few participants they want the contact details of the speakers so sir uh, should we put your details yes yes surely i am happy to do that so yes thank you very much so uh, participants we put the details of our uh, uh, today's speakers so sir one more question from the professor rahul uh, my question is uh, corona present in the environment many years but it could not uh, create any problem but it should be create problem from 20 to 21 century so many uh, variety of the corona so uh, which type of vaccine is more reliable for every type of corona yes please see now it is depend upon the how virus has evolved because how its infectivity or its virulence has been increased Because corona, normal corona viruses are there, but uh, this has been more as a novel corona virus, which is having more infectivity and uh, more severity. So now there are virus into the environment. So I think the vaccination will every year we have to do some sort of vaccination because till the data shows that the vaccine for vaccine immune responses are for almost three to six months. So data is coming, but I think. we have to do yearly vaccination like influenza they do in the western country they do yearly shots of uh, influenza so similarly we have to do because it is a rna virus and it is evolving uh, day by day Hello, you are unmute, sir. Yes, thank you very much, sir, 
uh, for giving a, a brief insight of the different models used for the uh, this uh, testing of your all the corona infection so i hand over mic to our uh, hod dr sayed mutin sir for for, uh, for further proceedings what do you sir thank you very much uh, india sir thank you sir uh, dr uddhav choudhury sir we are very very indebted and very very thankful to, for your uh, thoughtful and very descriptive talk on the covid 19 and the animal research sir uh, may i request you to please put your email id uh, whatever email id you want to communicate with the participants so you can put the your email id in the chat box if you wish so those who want your contact details they can get it also uh, we request from the dinesh sir dinesh sir actually uh, he left the meeting uh, due to some actually he is also having another uh, meeting okay okay thank you so actually the uh, in spite of a uh, very busy schedule dr uthav sir and dr dinesh sir they have given their precious time to us uh, it's uh, we are very thankful to them so hope the questions are not coming sir in chat box are there any questions further uh, so i have put, no, i have put my contact number email id in the chat box okay okay thank you very much sir okay thank you very much sir so now it is the time of vote of thanks so i dr sayed mateen associate professor and hod of department of pharmacology oriental college college of pharmacy i thank whole heartedly to the management of our college oriental college of pharmacy the visionary management who allowed us to not only allowed they motivated us to they promoted us to carry on to organize such programs in our college and due to this pandemic we are also organizing these programs on online basis as a webinar i am very thankful to our principal dr sudha rathod madam to for giving the permission to organize this program and uh, very importantly i am very thankful to dr dinesh kumar sir and dr uddhav choudhury sir to give their uh, for giving their valuable time and uh, imparting us a very valuable knowledge regarding the covid-19 research and uh, animal modeling and vaccination and challenges of pharmacotherapy i am very thankful to dr geeta wange madam she guided me to contact the speaker dr uddhav choudhury sir and other speakers and organization of this program so i am very thankful to dr uh, geeta wange madam i am thankful to all the delegates all the participants of the event uh, without whom the program cannot be become a success i am very thankful to our faculty members mr imtiaz ansari sir mrs pushpalata chogule madam and dr ganesh deshmukh sir who helped us to make this program success i am very thankful to all the students and all teaching and non teaching staff of our oriental college of pharmacy thank you very much sir thank you very much delegates and all the participants thank you very much sir take care sir